uh, I'd like to thank Nicola Daly for coming in and speaking with us. And just to kind of pick your brain a little bit and share some ideas about cinematography and drones and film creation and those kind of things. So um, first off, can you share your experience working with drones and the footage in films? I've used drones for lots of different applications. Um, so uh, I use them in film and TV in a more traditional sense, I guess. But um, I've used them in a, an art project that was like, a, what would you call it? Like a virtual experience of like, a, like different screens. It was like an art piece. So it's different screens around a room and people had headphones, Bluetooth headphones, and they went around. It's called The Crossing. And, um, and so we used a lot of drone footage in that in a very artistic way. Um, and then I've used them in like dance films. I've done my own dance films called Abandon um, that um, was directed by Nicholas St. Mark um, and I shot, but we sort of produced it together because we wanted to experiment with drones and dance. Um, and for that one in particular, we had this like idea that we wanted to put a light on a drone. So the camera's on the floor, but the light's on the drone. And then the dancer was sort of in the wood and the light was moving on the drone through the tree. So creating all these moving shadows. So we did that, that was just a short film that we did for fun um, and to sort of showcase our work. And we, I work a lot with a drone company called the Helicopter Girls here in the UK and they are superb. So they've done both of those projects that I mentioned. Um, so I don't fly drones myself, although they have given me a go on the old controls, but, um, uh, but yes, I work as a, as a director of photography, I work with a, with a drone company. So, um, but with the crossing, it was really interesting because we basically would fly in different places and then just see what we could get. So it was more improvisational than you would in a film where you've got maybe a certain shot that you really want to achieve. Um, and yeah, we, it was actually, we came up with this one great shot where all the leaves were like the drone was, it was autumn. So there were leaves everywhere. And um, the drone was actually, it was an octocopter. So it was actually quite a big drone. And it was just moving all the leaves on the, on the, you know, from the actual push of the wind from the octocopter. So um, we just went along the ground and did all these leaves moving. And so it's, um, so the crossing is a bit more sort of creative, if you like. So, but there's, you know, there's no end of uses you can use for, for drone footage. Oh, yeah, that kind of goes into my next question is, um, what do you think drone footage um, can do for, can, what can it bring to films and, and with the storytelling aspect of it as well. It's interesting, isn't it? Because if you're if you're looking at film and TV, that can off drone shots can often be used sort of for an unconventional tool. I think they can be used very conventionally, which is, you know, a scene is ending and you rise up and the car drives away and that's the end of the film. Or, or you know, you can sort of there's still traditions, but I think the best way to use them is to really, as with all cinematography, I think is to really think about the storytelling. So um, the best way to use the drone shot for the shot that you really want to tell the story with, not just say a traditional ending for, you know, but sometimes I think you don't know until you fly what you can see or what you can do. So. I actually really love them for that sort of, you know, you might have a shot in mind where you're sort of coming down at the character who's walking across the park or whatever, but until you get it in the air and, you, and then you say, we can try this or we can do this, you know, so it, it actually can be quite improvisational, even though with an octocopter or something, you've only got 10 minutes before you've got to change your batteries or, you know what I mean? There's obviously there's technical limitations, but, um, but, you know, it's sort of, it's a bit like they said about the steady cam when the steady cam came out. You know, the steady cam um, is limited by your imagination. It's kind of a bit like that with a drone, unless you're in really bad weather, and then and then it's no good. <laughs> sure, yeah. There there are some physical limitations too, environmental limitations. Yeah. Um, but along those lines, especially when you're planning, you know, and you're visualizing the the story um, and how it's going to go and how the film's going to go, is it? Do you find it? 
easier or more difficult or in between, I guess, uh, to conceptualize a drone shot, you know, the, the, the pull away or an aerial shot or some scope kind of perspective kind of thing. Is that, is that easy, easier to do now or is it uh, more difficult yet to kind of think like, oh, we, sh we should plug in a drone shot? Like, I think it, it always comes from the story and what the character's feeling in narrative cinema. So um, I'm on a period BBC One drama, costume drama at the minute, and we're going to use it in a couple of places. We've got sort of two lovers parting in two different carriages, you know, at, at one point with the horses and everything. So we're going to do it so you can see. But it's not just for the sake of doing a drone shot. It's for the fact that they won't see each other again and off they go into the distance, you know. And um, I guess drones have just enabled us to do stuff like that quite quickly. Um, but like I say, sometimes you can't, you can sort of imagine what you want to achieve, but then when you've got the drone up in the air, then all sorts of other things I think come creatively to light. And I think that's when you, as a DP, when you get a really good drone operator, they will suggest stuff. So they'll say, you know, why don't we fly over and, and counter track? I mean, I love a great counter track. So, you know, they might suggest all sorts of stuff that you, um, didn't think of, uh, you know, when you were sitting in an office, so to, you know, so to speak. So, right, right, and that's you know the other thing too is that, and that's great that you communicate with the drone operator um, because they know some different shots and stuff that they've done, you know, in previous experiences or previous scenes, or previous films, um, and they also know the capability and the, yeah. the angle, so they can provide that to you to kind of give that to you. But yeah, there are sometimes. In, in films, especially more so in television, I think, there's a lot more drone shots just for the sake of having a drone shot. Like mm -hmm. we have a drone, let's do this. And it, you know, it, it looks forced. <laughs> you know, it looks like it's not supposed to be there, so. Exactly. And, and on the drone operator thing, it used to be before drones, when, when I used to do documentaries for a long time. So um, it was when you used to sort of go into, well, I was in Australia at the time, so we go remote Australia, and then we do the helicopter shot, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you're always reliant on the helicopter pilot being really good. Because if you've got a helicopter pilot who didn't quite know, you know, you were sort of, I was hanging out the side with a camera, you know, obviously harnessed in very safe, but, but if they didn't know how to fly, you couldn't get the shots very well anyway. So, so it's always, as a DP, you're always looking to the, to the drone operator or whoever it is, you know, um, steady cam, you know, grips, you know, I think that I think as a DP, your crew's input into what you do creatively is super important. And then that doesn't stop at the drone operator, you know. Right. And that's, that's funny or good that you bring that up as far as with your experience with helicopters, um, because, you know, the drones are in a sense replacing the helicopter, the need for the helicopters because it's more convenient. But also, you know, you were sometimes limited with the equipment that you could carry or with a situation. Now the drones, you can, you know, put a decent red or Alexa camera, you know, camera on it, on the octocopters, or even if you need something a little bit more intimate or quick, you can use the, the smaller ones that are, you know, 4K, you know, really high resolution and, and you can set the codec and stuff that really works really well and give you good quality. So, mm. um, yeah. so yeah, flexibility. On the, yeah, on the costume drama, I think he's using the Inspire 2, I think. Is yeah. the, so it's pretty standard, but yeah, you're right. It's pretty quick as well, as long as the weather's agreeing to you, which with you, which it always doesn't in Britain, but you know, <laughs> as long as the wind is playing, you know, you can do it relatively, you know, if you've got a good operator as well. I mean, we did a trailer for a feature that we're hoping to get money for to do later in the year. And, um, and it's a musical set in Wales in a chicken factory. Um, so we did some Wales landscape and stuff, but because it's a musical and they're singing, you know, then, um, we could do so. We did some great drone shots in the in the trailer, which really helped sell it to get the money together. So, it's um, it's definitely a brilliant creative tool that you can, you know, use to you you know the fullest of your imagination. Right, and there's some beautiful landscapes in Wales that you can just 
capture. I can just imagine what that would, would look like. Well, you know, you talk about the weather in Britain, you have that, um, you, usually it's always that potential like gray. You always have that gray that always, you know, sticks with the image of Britain. So it gives that kind of darker, richer color sometimes. So um, so that's a that's a bonus. Where, whereas sometimes when it's too sunny, everything just gets washed out, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, have you know you you had experience with drones and working with drone operators and stuff? Have you ever been on a set or on a shoot or something, and and seen an experience where there something funny happened where a drone like interacted with you know they got too close to an actor or it just crashed or any in instances like that? Luckily, no. <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing untoward has ever happened. Um, I think I've just, um, yeah, I mean, there's always great safety, you know, safety briefings and everything. I think that's always super important. And um, um, no, I don't think anything's ever untowards happened. I mean, we, the only closest thing, I guess, was we were in, um, I don't think you can fly here now, but we're in right in the center of London. We had permission and everything, but we took off near the Tate Modern. Um, and oh it was the millennium bridge actually so you could see st paul's at the back mm -hmm. and um so we took off from a balcony at the tape modern i'm not sure you can get permission to do this anymore we had permission but um and it was really foggy and 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 we were like this is not going to work and we've got like 15 minutes to do it and then they're going to kick us out or they were opening the gallery so we had to go so we were just like well we're just look you know we'll just take off and and see what we can get and just as we came to do the shot of london basically which had been like covered in fog just as we rose up it just cleared enough to see like st paul's and the buildings and the, and it was it's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen and it was like the perfect weather timing you would ever get and i think we all just went oh That's you it. know <laughs> yeah. it's when that sort of magic happens that you just think well, we just sort of written it off in our heads because the weather was so bad, but then it looked incredible. And I think sometimes when you fly a drone, you don't really know what's over that crest of the hill because you haven't quite, you know, seen that. So um, sometimes it reveals itself to be pretty amazing, which is, which is fun and magical at the time. Um, with the costume drama that I'm doing at the minute, it's a bit like that. We don't know until we take off what's going to be modern in the background because this show is set in 1830s so we said to the visual effects guy well there's a drone shot and there might be a whole bunch of modern stuff over there but we don't know what it is <laughs> so be prepared to do a visual effects you know rubbing out a bunch <laughs> of yeah so sometimes you, you're right you don't know until you until you take off yeah that's the you know you have an idea for a perspective but you don't know because you're on the ground and then once you take off and you see that perspective, it kind of changes things and you adjust and it's like, oh, we got to get that shot or, ooh, we got to move this way and that'll be perfect. All of a sudden, then you, you just know, you know. Yeah. Um, so I guess the last area I wanted to get into is, is uh, what do you think, um, you know, we, we talked about how, thing, how drones benefit storytelling and filmmaking, but, you know, you talked about your experience with helicopters and now with drones, what do you, where do you see drones going? Where do you see kind of them being implemented in, in filmmaking and, and content creation? Gosh, that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think they're only gonna get more, you know, I think they're a tool. I think when, when you're a DP or a cinematographer, you have, I mean, it's amazing these days because you have a lot of, they're all those, all that equipment, um, it's just like different paintbrushes in your box, I think. So um, when you're into cinematography, I think you can get very caught up in the technical side of things because there's so much technical, you know, is it 4K, is it 6K, blah, blah, you know. But I think it's the, it's the artistic side of it, the storytelling side and the creativity side of it. So even if you're going to shoot a, a film on your iPhone or whatever, then it's still about where you put the camera out of the thousand choices of places that you could put it and why you put it there 
and um, why you put it there to tell the story of that character at that particular moment in time. So um, drones, I mean, they go into, and, and in the festival, there's some amazing sort of extreme sports and all sorts of things that, you know, drones can be used for, which is amazing. Um, but in terms of filmmaking and narrative um, framework, I think, I mean, they're only going to get better drones. They're only going to carry, you know, you look forward to the day when they can carry like a short zoom or, you know, an anamorphic lens or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's, it's, I think it's about the weight that they're going to take maybe might be improved so they could take, because there's certain limitations, you know, you can't obviously fly huge anamorphic lenses at the minute and stuff. So, you know, all that sort of technology side of it will only get slicker and better. But I think it's it's how you're going to use them to tell tell the story that you want to you want to tell. Um, I mean, I love it when you see you see it in commercials these days. You know, sometimes where there's a light on a drone and it's moving, and you know, I mean, they had New Year's Eve here. I don't know if you saw they had a drone instead of fireworks. They had a drone display. Mm -hmm. You know, so just being used in live events and um, spectacle. I mean, they're pretty incredible things. So, and people race them, don't they? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sport now, yeah. Yeah. So it's endless, really. It's people's imagination, I think. But narratively, yeah, narrative-wise, it's about, it, it comes from the story that you're telling. So that's only... Um, limited by what you and the director want there was a um i was at a trade show or a conference or something a few years ago and there was a company an australian drone company that was there and they were uh working with disney they were doing one of the pirates of the caribbean films out there and you know they wanted a longer lens they wanted you know they wanted a different shot and they didn't have the drone to do it, but these, this, uh, this company just created, they just made their own drone and were able to test it and carry the weight of a you know, longer lens on it and were able to go out there and make that shot. So now, you know, other studios and, and other filmmakers saw it and said, oh, we want, we want that drone. So now they're not just contracting out and doing films, but they're also now manufacturing their drones. So um you know making that drone so again it's a, like you were saying it's this imagination that's out there you know yeah. it's, it's really open which is very exciting i think i mean i love it when you see shots that fly in through say church windows or so and go into a, or go through a warehouse or you know i think it's it's one thing to just throw one up in the air and look around but it's another one to actually use like parallax change mm -hmm. and view and like to use foreground and wide shots and to to move through space so that you're not just sort of showing a pretty painting of a landscape but you're actually thinking how do I make a 2D art form look 3D which mm -hmm. we, which we do with lighting all the time but you know um, with drone shots if you can mix up your just pretty landscapes with going past the church spire or right um, it creates that movement and and allows and it actually even allows for you to continue shots that you probably weren't able to continue before you can have you know the right. idea from coming from way high and coming coming in and then continuing that shot instead yeah. of actually having to come in from a helicopter cut transition to something else you know so yes. it's exactly. uh, yeah. So yeah, the benefits I think, and and like I said, the continued growth is is pretty open. So. Yeah. I mean, we used to have like the steady cam operator, and then he steps on a crane, or she steps on a crane, and then you know go up like yeah. But now you could do that with a drone, you know. So it's, um, I think it's evolving all the time, isn't it? Which is what's exciting. Yeah, and you know it matches you know like that instance with the Pirates of the Caribbean, they there was a need for it and then there was an ability to create it. So as DPs and cinematographers go out there and think, I want to do this, you know, mm. and now it's a way of, it, it's not really if, it's just when, how are we going to create this to make this happen? So I, I think it opens up a lot more for creative filmmaking, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd love to put, I mean, I only put one light on one drone and moved it around, you know, as a dancer dance, but to have multiple drones with multiple lights, I mean, you know, there's all sorts of stuff you can do, isn't there? So, yeah, yeah fun. Yeah, that, that's a good thing. So, um, <laughs> well, thank you for your time. I don't want to keep you too much longer, but thank you for your time and your insight and sharing uh, this information with, with our attendees. And... Uh, Brilliant. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for being a judge and judging some of the categories. I really, really appreciate that. And um, and yeah, I, I guess good luck to everything that you're doing. Good luck to your period piece that you're working on. <laughs> thank you. It was a it was a pleasure to watch everything in the well, watch what I had to watch in the festival. It was um yeah, I learned a few things, so that's all great. That's good. I was like, you can do that with a drone? Wow. <laughs> <laughs>